Hey everyone, and welcome to a new series I'm gonna call Photography 101. If you guys are not aware, when I'm not making silly videos on YouTube like this about hockey and uh, other sports and ranking ridiculous things like logos and jerseys, I actually work as a freelance professional photographer I have for the past 10 years. I've done weddings and tourism stuff and work for airports and magazines and all kinds of stuff. So a uh, little unknown fact about me, possibly if you're not aware already, I have all of my, well, most of my work on my Instagram account. If you're not following me, please do. It is at uh, N-E-I-L-T-A-Y-L-O-R-R, -R, two R's at the end. It's also linked down below in the description. And uh, there's been a lot of requests from the people who do know that do know that I am a photographer to maybe do some, some you know, like some tutorials or tips and tricks or something like that. So I'm going to split this into three different parts within this series. So we have Photography 101, where I'm going to actually take your photos, or not take them, you're going to send them to me if you want. I'd love to, for you to, uh, emails down below in the description, uh, productions at post to post show.com. And uh, I'm going to critique them. I'm going to take a look at them, maybe give you some uh, photo by photo basis at my computer right next to me here with all the photos that I'm going to do in this video. And I'm going to go through every one and, uh, you know, just give you some tips, some tricks and some, just try and get, uh, maybe, maybe there's some creative juices flowing, I guess. And the other part of the series, I'm going to actually physically go out and, show you how to take a picture in certain scenarios at night uh, when it's sunny, you know, in the shade, all this other stuff. Um, so I'm gonna, that's part one and part two. Part three is actually editing my photos. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna call each individual series. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this one Photography 101, I know that, but uh, the other series will come in the future. And obviously during the lockdown, as I'm currently filming this, I can't actually leave and go to a park or go to a beach or whatever and take a photo, but there are some trails around my house. So if I do get a chance to go out and uh, safely take some photos, then I'll bring you guys along and then I'll edit those photos in the other part of the series. So three part series, part number one, photography 101, editing your photos, critiquing them, giving you some tips. And Catherine, you are the first in the series. Thank you so much for sending in your photos. Uh, Catherine reached out to me and, and shared her interest in photography. And then I thought, well, you know what, I can probably make a video about this and maybe hand off some tips. And this is how this series was born. So Catherine, thank you so much. She's provided uh, about 12 or 13 photos here to go through. And uh, I usually edit all my photos in Lightroom. However, in this exercise, I'm going to use Photoshop just to, uh, you know, do some cropping and some um, adjustments and stuff and then show you guys. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see it. I'm going to go away so you don't have to see my stupid face. And uh, let's 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 go with it. And also, before I be begin, sorry about that, uh, I am not like, I am a professional technically, but there are still things that I don't know. So I, if you disagree or maybe you know a better method, that's totally fine. I'm just using the methods and the stuff that I was taught and the stuff that I use on a daily basis when I work as a photographer. So I'm not pretending to, to, be, to know it all. I definitely don't. I know many photographers who are close to me who know much more than I do and are more talented than I do. I'm just passing off what I do know. Okay, let's get into it. Photo number one. Uh, the Catherine sent in. We've got a, a lovely black and white photo here, and uh, this looks to be the winter time. I can see some snow back off in the trees, and obviously some, some snow in the foreground. Although that does kind of look like a towel a little bit, just the textures of the threads and stuff. But uh, I do believe it is frost or snow, more, maybe more frost than, than snow. But uh, anyways, it, it's pretty cool. We see some depth of field here. We see uh, a lot of contrast with the black and the white. Uh, the, you know, obviously the white and the snow, and then the black of the trees in the background and the shadows. It looks pretty good. I would, if I could offer any tips here, as far as photography wise, I would potentially kind of stray away from splitting the middle of the frame with any lines. If you wanted to split the frame with a, a horizon or any kind of lines, you want to kind of have those on a third. So for example, if I want to use the frost or snow, we'll call it as a third. So that, that top line right there, and kind of um, make sure that it's level or as close to level as possible. Either have that on a third or the horizon in the background, which I guess is a bit skewed because of the trees in front. It makes it look like it's not straight, but uh, I would go something probably like this, just so I'm avoiding splitting the photo completely with one of those middle lines. And uh, if I was to frame it in person, I probably would not chop off the top of the trees there. But otherwise, this is a really interesting photo. You get some detail up front and then the out of focus or bokeh effect in the background. Uh, great depth of field here. All right, this next one is a absolutely lovely sunset shot, uh, sunset silhouette shot. And there's so many things about this photo that I really, really enjoy. Uh, I know, Catherine, that, or I, I see that you're shooting in 
pretty much a square orientation. So if I was, could rem I recommend anything, it would be to possibly shoot in um, six by four or something more like that. So I would probably, I really like the shadow coming off of, or not the shadow, I guess it is a shadow and slash reflection coming off of the stop sign or walk sign in the middle. I, I don't really want to use that, but I need to fix my orientation or my perspective a little bit. Um, so I'm going to probably choose that as a crop. And something else I'm noticing is this is light over here on the left. I find that a bit distracting, so I'm, I'm just going to lose that a little bit. And that way we have a complete silhouette on the left. And these two lights here are absolutely lovely. You can, you can see the reflection and shine off of the wet street. I really, really like that. The sky is beautiful. We have the silhouette on the right to balance the photo of the silhouette on the left, which is amazing. And it's, it's symmetrical because of that. And also because the stop sign of the sign is right in the middle, which kind of splits the photo a little bit. But I, th I think I find what, what's most interesting about this is that the horizon is straight from what I can tell but you kind of feel like it's not because of this pole. That pole is leaning because look at the pole in the background. That's straight. I believe that this pole is physically and literally in life probably leaning to the left here a little bit, which is a little scary, but it adds a bit of interest to the photo. Uh, otherwise, just a beautiful photo. Good job, Catherine. All right, next she has, uh, wow, that looks, <laughs> that looks amazing. As I'm filming this, you know, it's being stuck inside. And then you see something like this. Man, I'd love to get out in the water and, and uh, paddle around. But you've got four canoes here set up nicely. So what's really interesting about this photo is that the tree above that's hanging down, not the trees in the background, but the tree above, kind of adds a little bit of frame within a frame, I guess, if you, if you, if you want to call that. However, the trees in the background, they kind of clash with each other. I think if there was maybe some depth of field here and those trees in the background were out of focus or something like that, the, the, the tree that's closest to us or hanging over would feel a little bit better. But because it's, because they're both basically in the same or in focus, the, the same amount, they, they kind of clash with each other. So I'd actually maybe lose a bit of that if I could, cause I don't really find that adds a lot. I want to keep a little bit of the sky off to the left, but I want to also lose that top little branch in the top left there. I find that a bit distracting. So I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit and I'm going to move this up just a hair from the bottom. And I, I'm worried about my horizon here. So there's a bit of perspective trickery going on because the photo is taking straight on, but the shoreline actually curves off to the left in the distance. So we, we wanna make sure that we have the, this, a straight horizon but make sure that the horizon is straight and it's not our mind playing tricks on this because of the curve of the shoreline. So we just need to be really careful. And uh, we also have the trees banking down to the left, which is, which is also playing with our mind a little bit. So I'm gonna leave that just where it is at the moment. Um, I, I don't really like this tree off to the left and there's obviously nothing Catherine could, could have done about that unless she, she went in the water and tore it out and she's not gonna do that and neither would I if I was there. But one thing we can do if we want to do some editing here real quick is we can just kind of take out this. Now, this could work really uh, well or this could work really bad. I don't know until I try. There's a thousand different methods that you can use to remove that. I'm just going to use that one. It obviously needs fixed up a little bit. There's a oops, there's a couple little couple little issues here with that fix. And if I was doing this, you know, if I was spending a lot of time, if this was, photo was really, really important, I'd make sure that that looked proper. But now that that branch is gone on the left, things look a lot better. You get some weight from the ground and from the canoes uh, at the bottom, split by the water, and the opposite weight at the top with the trees and stuff. So uh, overall, just a, a really nice photo. Moving on, she's got uh, a fire here, which is really cool. It's all the interest is in the middle. Again, I'd probably just adjust the crop a little bit so we don't have the actual subject directly in the middle. So while it is in the middle here, it's not in the middle square, it's in the bottom middle square. And uh, your aspect ratio will, will help that a little bit um, with framing. So I would avoid always putting the subject right in the middle. You wanna have it on a third, whether it's a, a, th uh, a line of thirds. All right, there we go. So 
if you want to have the subject on a third, it could be uh, the left bottom third dot or the top left third dot or one of these third lines that split the, the photo. I would really recommend not putting any subject directly in the middle of the photo. That's a, it's not really a no-no, but in this situation, it, it doesn't really work, in, in my opinion. Uh, so I, there's nothing really else to do to this photo. It, it's, it's pretty great uh, from a photography perspective. If I was here, I would maybe recommend getting down on the fire's level and shooting at the same level or try to make the fire look more dominant or more scary. It is the fire is, you know, you, fire is fire is not nice. Fire is scary. Fire is, is overpowering. You want it to look overpowering and shooting from a human perspective, looking down on it, it, it fire, it's still overpowering, but it could be more overpowering if you just got right down to the ground and shot at the same level and almost looking up at the fire it would give it a very menacing look. Okay, moving on, and we have the, what looks to be maybe like a football, an outdoor football stadium or something that looks like big floodlights um, or something like that. But this is a, a dandelion or whatever it is in the front and again, I'm just going to fix the aspect ratio a little bit. And I noticed some leaves and stuff uh, or some foliage down on the bottom. And there's a kind of a, a distracting element right here. So I'm just going to lose that. And that's going to help us with our perspective as well. I'm keeping the horizon right on uh, a line of thirds there. But we notice that we have that dandelion or that flower or whatever it is in the middle of the, of the, the frame, which is a bit of a no-no. Now, I don't really want to cut off this part over here because those trees are interesting, but there's not really anything going on to the left. So if I just crop this in a little bit and I'm going to have to fix the sky to meet the correct perspective and I can probably leave that little tree in on the left, something like that, just to offset that dandelion thing a little bit. And otherwise, that's basically all I would do to this. Good job, Catherine. Okay, moving on. What an absolutely stunning photo this is. Remarkable. Uh, again, perspective is the only thing that I would change. I would do that, and I'm done. Like this is this is a pretty great, this is a pretty great photo. If I bring back up the thirds, you have the sun setting basically on a third, a line of third, which is which is great. And uh, you know you have a gradient in here. You have wonderful colors. You have a silhouette with the the front. Uh, mountains which are quite dark and then the mountains beyond that you see a little bit of information in there maybe some snow up in there I can't really tell but that's the point you kind of want it to be hidden a little bit but still a little bit lighter so you've got depth here even though it's a silhouette photo you've got amazing colors um, it tells a story and it's just beautiful all right this one is in this is in New York City I to believe that's the Empire State Building possibly and I think you took this from the top of the rock, maybe, if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly. And you're using a method here, I'm sure there's a better name for it, but I just call it frame within a frame. You're using the, the shape here of this window or whatever it is to frame your actual subject in the photo, which is really cool. I'm just gonna fix the perspective a little bit, bring that down, maybe bring this up a little bit. I wanna lose this left piece here because I find that distracting and I'm gonna lose these this right piece as well. And I'm probably, I want it to be completely symmetrical because that shape is completely symmetrical. So I'm going to, I'm looking at the top here and making sure that this point is kind of in the middle of this thing to keep that totally symmetrical. But we have a problem because this piece of stone or wall or whatever is higher on that side than it is this side. So we have a tough decision to make. Do we go like this? So it's kind of corner to corner like that. That's probably what I would do in this situation. And I'd probably lose a little bit more of the city and bring the horizon up on a third, something like that. And I'm going to fix the horizon. So it's a little bit straight. It's hard to do in Photoshop. I'm used to this. Now we have one more item to fix here and that's off to the right. This, even though this tower is really cool, it's a, it's a bit distracting. So I'm going to just take one of the Photoshop tools, which is a clone tool, which I actually don't use that often. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of clone it out. And there are better ways to do this, better methods, but this is just a quick and quick and dirty way just for this um, exercise. So now that that's gone, I wouldn't do anything else perspective wise uh, other than this. I do find this big black 
blob here a bit distracting, but uh, there's obviously nothing she can do about that. She can't crush buildings in stone and move them around, so not, uh, not Catherine's fault here. If I could provide maybe some tips, it would be take a step to the left so this top tower here isn't cut off. We've got lots of room off to the left of the Empire State Building, and the one on the right, I think I said left earlier, but I meant right. Uh, this one over here on the right, uh, we're, we're, we're kind of cutting off that top of the antenna. We want to keep that, keep that information in there. So maybe just like a half step to the left, and uh, that should fix that problem perfectly. Otherwise, really cool photo and very, very creative framing within a frame. All right, next we've got this awesome black and white photo, which I believe is New York City as well. Uh, and we've got some awesome edged text in here, or edged font, whatever. And then, so I'm just going to, even though I really like that reflection, I think I'm just going to, again, f fix the orientation of this photo or the perspective. Um, and uh, this, this little black curvature of the stone is a little distracting to me, so I'm just going to remove that so our eye doesn't get drawn to it. And unfortunately, we are stuck with this subject being, uh, like again, kind of in the middle of the frame. And the building off to our left, that see that the edge of the building would also, when it also casts a shadow, that's not straight. And with architecture, you really want to make sure that your buildings are straight. So I'm going to fix that, make sure that's a little straight, a little more straight, good enough. And then we obviously lose information on our corners here, so we need to fix that. And kind of do that. If I was doing this properly, I would have done this first and then probably uh, cropped. So one thing I do notice, and it's just this part of the building to the left here. I don't want to see the white on the other side, so I'm just going to do that. Um, can't really fix the, again, the subject in the center here but it's really cool we get depth of field the buildings in the background are uh, you know they're out of focus but there's still still information there we uh, still have some some horizon or, or architecture problems here this building here is is quite uh, quite not straight so there's some there's some maybe some wide angle lens <laughs> things happening here that's causing some of that, but uh, pretty cool. I really love the depth of field. It's it's an emotional photo. It's a powerful photo. It's maybe looks to be around ground zero or something like that. Um, so very, very nice photo. Ah, next we've got a very nice sunny snow winter photo. And you've done something really cool here. You've introduced leading lines and you've given our eyes a path to follow. And uh, you know, you could have easily walked way, way, way to your left or to your right and shot the trail that way, but you actually stood on the trail and you've used it to your advantage visually to give us somewhere to go subconsciously, which is really cool. You've got, uh, you've got this, oh, let me change the color. You've got um, this line here, which follows like that and goes around. Then you've got this line here, which follows, wow, that is brushes, that brush is way too big. But you get what I mean. You got lines here, and you got lines there. Then you have the lines actually in the path itself from a groomer or a snowmobile or something. And so that's pretty cool. Now, if I remove all of that nonsense, um, would I change anything frame-wise? Probably not. I really like the photo itself. I feel like it's a bit right-weighted heavy with this tree but there's nothing we can really balance it with on the left-hand side. Um, I might take, from a photography perspective, I might take two to two and a half steps to my right to make this, let me see if I can do this, to have this um, path come off of like the corner. Do you know what I mean, possibly? So we can have... Um, it's a little bit more, oh, this is going terribly, but how am I going to do this where this is going to look proper? Pretend this trail right here is not here, okay? Just pretend that's snow. <laughs> so, and this one here would actually, the trail would still end up visually, the end of the trail would kind of end up over there, but the path would start over to the right. Now, ignore the, <laughs> ignore the perspective here, but you, you can understand what I'm saying, I believe. 
Um, so we want that path to kind of end in the middle a little bit, but we want the trail to kind of come off the left. This is a terrible, <laughs> this is a terrible exercise or example, but I think you know what I mean. Um, but otherwise, just a really subtle change, but it's, it's a great photo. Ah, another black and white one here. So we have, we have some interesting things happening. We have this, uh, I don't even know what you call that, lifesaver, whatever I'm call it, whatever majigger. And we've got this fence, which is, you know, this old wood. It's obviously been there for a long time. It's got texture. It's got a story. It's got history. And then this concrete kind of stuff down here. I, I, th I believe that's concrete or pavement or something. Uh, really, really cool. But the information in the background, the, the seaweed, I guess, if you want to call that or whatever it is, that's kind of dirty and kind of grungy and not in really a good way. So I'd probably lose that. And much like the fire, if you're taking something from, if you're taking a picture of a subject and that subject is always taken from a human perspective, it's never really going to be any different than someone just looking at it. If you bend down and get at the level of this life raft or life saver, whatever it is, and shoot it straight or flat on, it'll give it more of a story. It'll give it more personality. You'll see a little bit more texture in the in the wood and the um, the the concrete if that's in the shot as well. And then you'll lose this kind of information in the background, which is a bit distracting and doesn't really tell us a lot of what's going on. So we, if you did bend down, then we'd lose that, and then the photo would kind of come more like this, and it would be um, more like this. You need to have that actual big uh, thing right in the middle symmetrically. And uh, you have a lot more interest there, I think. Other than that, pretty cool. And next is a black and white flower. And we're just going to give this a quick little edit here. I see you have some vignette coming on the right, which I find just a little distracting, and your flower's in the middle. So I actually like the blade along the left up top, so I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to move this up just a little bit like that, just to give it uh, some balance here with the flower on the right and then the blade the big blade on the, along the left, but pretty cool. I really like black and white flower photos. They're, uh, most people shoot them in color, obviously, so seeing a black and white one is pretty neat. Uh, all right, this one, and I really only see one issue here, and that's the horizon's not straight, so we're going to fix that a little bit. Uh, we're going to bring this up, I think, a little bit. We want that horizon to be as close to a, a line of third as possible, and the dead stuff down in the bottom we don't really want or need in the photo anyway so I'd like the horizon to be up there ish but we have an issue where we're losing information in the top so let's uh let's just bring it back down here uh, and then the standard line thing on the on the left and I'd probably remove this thing if I could and man if we had like a moon or something like that off to the right just to balance it a little bit That'd be perfect. Okay, the last one, and this is, a, <laughs> you're playing to your audience here, Catherine. I really like this photo. Uh, there's there's a lot of really cool, interesting things happening here. We've got a, a story being told. So let's first, let's fix the perspective a little bit. Something like that. Oops, I did that backwards from what I was doing earlier. So let's just fix the, pers the uh, perspective. Yeah something like that and then we want the horizon to kind of be down again close to a third so we'll do that and then i think i don't like that plane in the middle so i'm actually gonna i'm gonna move that if that's okay catherine not that not that you can do this in real life and move planes around i'm gonna move it over here i think and i'm gonna change that blending mode to darken so uh, mostly only the, the darks which is the plane will show up and I'm going to remove that plane entirely from the other spot. Now, there's a thousand different ways to do this. I just like doing that method. It's just easy. And the reason I move this plane over here is because you have lines that are leading, leading you somewhere. And if I take the brush again, or actually I'll use the line tool. If I do this, just kind of make this line. See this line of the wing here? that's kind of coming over like kind of like that but then you have a, another line that's pointing way up there if we go in between that and just go corner to corner a little bit right there 
that's subconsciously going to give our eyes a direction to kind of go. And when that when our eyes go in that direction, what's going to be there? This plane. So we'll keep the plane maybe around up here somewhere because we want it to balance with the big wing down here. So we'll probably keep that around there and we can lose that now. And the blending mode is not doing that great of a job up there, but we're just going to leave that. I don't care. This wing here, of this, I think it's the back of a plane, the tail of a plane. It's a bit distracting. So I'm probably going to remove that. And again, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, if you're not familiar with editing all this stuff this frequently, then you're not going to spend time doing all this stuff. But just for this exercise, this is what I would do with my photos. So, okay, what's going on here? So I'm just taking a sample here and then I'm going to kind of clone down this section so the wing kind of matches. Now I made a mistake there, which is not good, but that's okay. So we're just going to really just carefully kind of clone down and we'll come back up here and we'll make some um, minor, uh, minor adjustments kind of like this. There is again, there's like a ton of ways to do this. This is not the proper way. It's just a quick way for me. And we're just going to take this, and go to that, and go to that, and go to that, and, go to that, and boom, done. Okay. All right. So now that we have that wing gone, and obviously it's, I would do a better job uh, if I wasn't doing this quickly, but uh, we have, yeah, we have what I think is probably what I would do with this photo. It changes it just a little bit, and not too hard to do, just a couple little tricks. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think I... I think I kind of showed you guys just some some little photography trips to trip uh, trips tips to use you know keeping the subject away from the middle keeping the horizon on a third keeping buildings as straight as possible uh, thinking about weight when it comes to a photo keeping if your if your main subject is on the left you want to have some weight on the right too maybe a secondary subject and think about your foreground think about your background think about the story that your photo is telling. Um, if a lot of these issues or, or little things that I would tweak can be fixed before the photo even happens. It's almost all about framing. The editing stuff, that stuff's easy. But if you can get the photo as right as you can from the when, or when you take the photo, then, I mean, you're golden. You're, you're reducing your editing time um, every time you take a photo. So I uh, hope these little uh, tips and tricks could help you guys. If you have any interest in photography, um, yeah, you know, send me some of your photos. That would be awesome. I would love to do this again with someone else's photos and offer some more tips and tricks. Uh, feel free to email me those at productions at post And I'll try and do this series as, as frequently and as often as possible, as long as I get photos submitted. And uh, if you want to title that email that you send me, photography101, critique my photos or just critique my photos or something like that that would be that would be awesome so really really excited to see your photos there's lots of talent out there and like i said if you want to see some of my work you can go to instagram and follow me there links are down below in the description thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it subscribe for more videos like this photography tutorials hands-on photography tutorials and editing tutorials in lightroom so i'll catch you guys in the next video in this series adios